Good morning. And welcome to worship with us this morning. I know it feels like it's the middle of summer, but it's not. We welcome you to be with us this day as we hear the good news of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Let us rise and begin our service with the ring of a church bell.
continue in our baptismal grace in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sin, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are clear. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of our God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us our sins and lead us to our life. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. God on high be glory and peace to all the earth. Good will from God on Since we cannot stand before you, rely on anything we have done. Help us to trust in your running grace and live according to your word. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit. One God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading is from Isaiah chapter 55 and beginning with the sixth verse. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord that he may have compassion on him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. Fear the Lord, you his saints. Those who fear him nothing. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivers him out of 
The second reading is from Philippians chapter 1, and beginning with the 12th verse. I want you to know, brothers, that what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel, so that it has become known throughout the whole imperial guard and to all the rest that my imprisonment is for Christ. And most of the brothers, having become confident in the Lord by my imprisonment, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. For I know that through your prayers and the help of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, this will turn out for my deliverance, as it is my eager expectation and hope that I will not be at all ashamed, but that with full courage now, as always, Christ will be honored in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me. Yet which I shall choose, I cannot tell. I am hard-pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary on your accounts. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with you all for your progress and joy in the faith, so that in me you may have ample cause to glory in Christ Jesus because of my coming to you again. Only let your manner of life be worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or I am absent, I may hear of you that you are standing firm in one spirit, with one mind striving side by side for the faith of the gospel, and not frightened in anything by your opponents. This is a clear sign to them of their destruction, but of your salvation and that from God. For it has been granted to you that for the sake of Christ you should not only believe in him, but also suffer for his sake, engaged in the same conflict that you saw I had and now hear that I still have. This is the word of the Lord. According to St. Matthew, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. For the kingdom of heaven is like a master of a house who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for the vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for a denarius a day, he sent them into the vineyard. And going out about the third hour, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And to them he said, you go into the vineyard too, and whatever is right I will give you. So they went, going out again about the sixth hour and the ninth hour, he did the same. And about the eleventh hour, he went out and found others standing. And he said to them, why do you stand here idle all day? They said to him, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you go into the vineyard too. And when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, call the laborers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last up to the first. And when those hired about the eleventh hour came, each of them received a denarius. Now when those hired the first came, they thought they would receive more. But each of them also received a denarius. And on receiving it, they grumbled at the master of the house, saying, These last workers only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the day and the scorching heat. But he replied to the one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for a denarius? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give this last worker as I gave to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or do you begrudge my generosity? So the last will be first, and the first will be last. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. We confess our common Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He ascended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty.
My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I give thanks to my God in heaven for the faith given to you by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. It's almost impossible for us not to measure things in life, not to look at our own station, not to see what goes on with our neighbors or others in our life. The gospel lesson for today is a pointed reminder that we think much more highly about our own activities than probably we ought to. You know, that gospel story for today about those who the, the master of the vineyard hired at the first hour, the third hour, the sixth, the ninth, and the eleventh hour all got paid the same wage. And I understand how it could be for the one who was hired in the first hour to say to the master, hey, you know, how about a little something for the effort, you know? I mean, for me. It's, it's very common sense to all of us, is it not? Until you hear what the master says. Is it not mine to give? Is it not mine to pay and be merciful? But there's that small part of me, and I know probably that small part of you that says, oh, that's ridiculous. I worked all day, and that one guy, he came at the 11th hour and got the same as me? Well, if you've ever thought about this text in this way, I would encourage you to think about it. This is kind of like a picture of the end times. This is kind of like a picture of those who have been faithful since childbirth or since baptism and those who converted late in life. Those who may be like the thief on the cross acknowledge Jesus. They're at the very end of their life. They receive the equal reward which was in heaven by the grace of Jesus Christ's death and resurrection. Now when you hear it in those terms, it's a little bit, just a tad bit, easier for us to swallow that all got paid the same in the end. Right? Unless you pay a little bit more attention to the amount of work. See how Satan can start playing with your head? Well, that's right, Pastor. I, I, I believe that. But I've been faithful my whole life. You see where it comes in? Because for us, equality is measured only insofar as what we believe. You see? What we're owed. How we work. And yet God's bounty. And I love, I, I, I talked to the Bible class earlier about this. I'm going to reread this sentence because... It is very dramatic when you listen to it and let it sink in. As the master of the vineyard says these words, Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Now those words are pointed. Those words are words that kind of grab the attention of the believer. Is God not allowed to do what he sees fit with his mercy, his blessing, his grace? And the answer is yes. Yes, he is. But the sinful side of us still wants to try to measure what we do, how we act, how we live, the things we do with the resources that God provides to us. And we love to allow Satan to convince us in some way to keep track, right? To measure ourselves versus our neighbor. To measure what God's blessing is for the neighbor and then to look to the heavens and say, God, why not me? I have been faithful. But then you remember these words of the New Testament. If you can be faithful with very little, you can be entrusted with great things. But if you can't be faithful with the very little things, how does God entrust to you great things to manage? And then that takes a little bit more of an examination of oneself. It is absolutely easy for us 
to look at how God is blessing our neighbor, our friends, others in our family, and to wonder, Lord, why am I struggling? And then to try to find out what we can do better, right, to make it more prosperous for us. Notice what the theory is there. It's all about how things apply to me. You know, what can I do or what can others do to make sure things are better for me? When it comes to grace and forgiveness, when it comes to to salvation and everlasting life, Jesus' death and resurrection is paid for for all people equally. You know that great Luther hymn we just sang for the sermon hymn, you know, works serve our neighbor, but they don't get us to heaven. Right? Salvation unto us has come by God's free gift and favor. It's amazing when you think about the fact that the love and favor of God comes to us even when we don't deserve it. Even when we're not worthy of it, the forgiveness and salvation of God is bestowed upon us. And that's a a miracle in and of itself. We see in the Old Testament lesson for today that great declaration that God says, my thoughts are not your thoughts, my ways are not your ways. And yet earlier in that text, God reminds us to come to him. In that Isaiah 55 chapter, come to me, you who are heavy laden, and I will do what? I'll give you rest. I'll give you forgiveness. I'll give you mercy. And it's equal to the one who comes at the first hour and the one who comes at the 11th hour. Now make no mistake about it. And and just let's be very clear. From a human standpoint, this is almost impossible to reconcile. Right? I mean, let's just be clear. If I'm going to work harder than him, he shouldn't get the same as me. And yet Jesus says, I worked hard for all of you. As there on the cross, he bled. As there on the cross, he declared before his father to forgive all people equally. To forget their sins and let them be remembered no more. And yet here in the gospel lesson, we see this phraseology come up in the text. If you look at it. The master comes and sees them idle. What does that word idle mean? A lot of you know what it means. <laughs> Doing nothing. Look what they said. The ones at the 11th hour when the master came, they said, what are you doing? And they said, well, well nobody has come and hired us. No one has come and hired us. You see the point there? They're just waiting for someone to come. And Jesus says, notice that they were idle. He said, hey, you, you go in the vineyard too. We need you. Go and work. And I'll pay you a fair wage. Did you notice that? It didn't say exactly what the later people were going to make. Only the earlier people were told what they were going to make, a denarius. The later people were simply told, I will give you what a fair wage is for you. And they said, okay. And then when the master doled out the payment, it was equal. My friends, that is how it will be in heaven. As as frustrating as it might be for some of you, when Jesus comes a second time, he will come and every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that he is both Lord and King, God and Savior, and salvation will be given to those who believe and hell will be given to those who don't believe. It's that simple. The formula is not great. And you won't have time, by the way, to look at your neighbor and say, oh, they've only been working for an hour. Because the humility of being a child of God called by his gospel will overtake you. And the knowledge that you are forgiven free of charge without payment on your own accord will be more rewarding than anything that you can ever have given to you. And so we enter in the kingdom of God with grace and with mercy. Don't be idle, my dear brothers and sisters. Don't be idle in your faith. Don't stand by and wait because God has first come to you. He has loved you. He has forgiven you. And now he calls you to go and share that with other people. He calls you to go and to forgive those who trespass against you, those who have hurt you, those who have offended you. He calls you to restore that relationship and to show the love that was first shown to you as our Lord Savior went to the cross to clear a path for all sinfulness co-equally with all people regardless of the duration of their faithfulness. Let that be your joy this week as you go on your way. Let that be reminded to you that faithfulness in the gospel is rewarded co-equally with forgiveness, mercy, grace, and eternal life in Jesus Christ. As our great God shines on us with his son's love, we can shine on others with that same love, knowing that that forgiveness won for us is equal 
for all people. In his great name and according to his great will, we can all say amen. May God the Father who gives us the great gift of his Son, may God the Son who gives us the great gift of his life and death, and may God the Holy Spirit continue to bless, guide, lead, and strengthen you now and forevermore. Amen. We worship the Lord this day with our offering. time we ask for any special prayers to be brought before our Lord and in our prayers this day we'll be including Pastor Strusenberg as many of you know have fallen and uh, required some medical attention in Alaska as well as Dean the sister of uh, George Eccles. My brother John he has some tests <coughs> With that, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Friends in Christ, I urge you all to lift up your hearts to God and pray with me as Christ our Lord has taught us and truly promised to hear us. Merciful God, we come before you this day. We ask you to continue to share the gospel, the good news of salvation and forgiveness, which is equally one for us all. We ask you to remind us to not look at our neighbor with covetous hearts with measurement hearts, measuring what our neighbor has through your blessing, knowing that you give in ways that are your understanding. We also ask you to remind us to be faithful, to know that even in the very last hour of someone's <coughs> life, your gospel message is for them as well. We ask you to bless us, O oh Lord, and continue to be beacons of light in this world to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ, forgiveness and salvation. We ask these things, Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We ask you this day, O oh Lord, to be with all those in the Caribbean, those in the DR, Dominican Republic, in Florida, in Texas, all those affected by hurricanes and, and weather disasters. We know these many things have come in succession, Lord, that have affected so many people. And we ask you to send your bright beams of light, your forgiveness, your mercy, and your compassion to these, your people, so that they would know that you will not leave nor forsake your people, but be with them. Help people to rebuild, O oh Lord, with conscious hearts, knowing that you will bless, also knowing that you will sustain as we ask you to be with also those who give care, 
the workers, those who contribute, and those who stand ready to help. We ask these things in your name, Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Be with your church, O oh Lord, that the confession of faith and the proclamation of the gospel may, may go out and not return empty as your word has promised. Help your church to grow mightily, Lord, in the confession of Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world, both now and always. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. We ask you to be with your people this day, those we name in our hearts and those we name now, for Dean, Pastor Strusenberg, John, Eugene, Katrina, Mike, Debbie, send your healing hand and your mighty power, O oh Lord, to, to strengthen the hearts of your people to know that you are with them, that your healing hand will be upon them, and that through all things you will be with your people. We ask, O oh Lord, to give patience and comfort, and above all else, the knowledge of knowing you as Savior and Lord. We ask these things this day for your people, Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Be with the leaders of our land and of our church, for President Trump, Pastor Harrison and myself, that we be given wisdom to lead with integrity and the knowledge of knowing your Son, Jesus Christ, proclaiming him as the Savior of the world. Help us, O oh Lord, and all those who govern. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and sad, Terry, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who having created all things, took on human flesh, was born of the Virgin Mary. For our sake he died on the cross and rose from the dead, to put an end to death, thus fulfilling your will, and gaining for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. the sin of Adam and Eve who ate the forbidden fruit, and you justly barred them and all their children from the tree of life. Yet in your great mercy you promised salvation by a second Adam, your son, Jesus Christ. Our Lord, and you made him a cross of a life-giving tree for all who trust in him. We give you thanks for the redemption that you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us faithfully to eat your body and drink his blood, and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in body and blood. We hear, we pray the name of our Lord Christ. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you for the complete remission of all of your sins. Do this often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
precious body and blood of Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you, depart forgiven. Go in his peace. Amen. strengthen and preserve you. Go. Forgiven by the Lord. Go in his peace. Amen. Precious body and blood of Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you. Depart from him and go.
us. Body and blood of Jesus Christ, grant them to serve and depart forgiven. Go in his peace. Amen. rise for the post communion candle.
We give thanks to you, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. We implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us in the same in faith towards you and in firm and love towards one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. As you go, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. Please be seated as we invite the announcements to come forward at this time. Looks like you're forward, Paul. Uh, there's movement. I don't know if it's a... You could have taken the shortcut, Ben. Nothing. That'll boy. Hello, uh, some of you, uh, every, yeah, I don't know, uh, people, I am here to, <laughs> I am here to sell coupon books for my course. Uh, the, the money will go to my course activity fund, uh, to go to a competition where we can sing, um, to judges, and then the rest of the day we can, uh, go to Kennywood. <laughs> well, Ben. <laughs> it's a short day, so we. Um, on here we have TGI Fridays, twenty off, twenty five food price. We have Rita's, Firehouse Subs, Little Caesars on here, Max and Irma's, Taco Bell, and they all have their destination. I mean addresses. Mexican places, uh, pizza, yogurt, pretty much anything you can ask on here. All right, I'm done. Thanks, Ben. How much, Ben? That a boy. Good morning. I have two quick things before I do. Mr. and Mrs. Black, your son's been abducted by aliens. He, he's, yesterday he was that tall. I know. Um, two things. First of all, I wanted to thank everyone who came to the first week of the Bible study sessions that began last Thursday. 
Uh, we had 15 folks in the library, and it was very exciting and a lot of, a lot of enriching conversation and prayer. The subject was prayer. This coming Thursday night, please come. I, my, my aim is to overflow that library, so we have to move it into here. And it's going to be on forgiveness this week. And once again, uh, it is not repetitive. It is not, one does not build on the other. So if you missed last week and you can only come this week, that's fine. Okay? Um, one other thing I just wanted to announce as uh, in part of my role as president of the congregation, we've been working very hard on what an action plan will be now that Pastor Carlson will soon be leaving. I guess his last official day is September 30th. Uh, in so doing, so that everybody heard the exact same thing, uh, I carefully put together a letter relative to the call process, etc. Um, Len had a lot of heavy input in since he has a lot of experience with that, and Rick and Chris and I have talked about it, and the council have talked about it too. So on the way out of the, the church today, uh, we're going to give each family a, a, an envelope which has that, those specific steps and uh, an action plan in mind. If you have any, uh, any questions about it, uh, feel free to call me after the Steeler game. Um, uh, so uh, I hope you all have a great day. Thank you. Just want to highlight a couple things for you. You know, over the course of ministry, uh, you take certain tracks and focuses, right? Sometimes it's uh, a visitation, sometimes it's stewardship, sometimes it's, it's different things in the life of the pastor. And I know for many years now, I think probably the last two or three, maybe four, uh, we haven't focused on stewardship as much as we did probably the first five or six years once uh, we, we merged into Peace Lutheran Church. One of the things I just want to highlight for you is congregations have life cycles of certain things, and I think giving is one of those life cycles. And we're going to be uh, reporting to you a little bit more in detail where the church is at financially. Uh, and I just want you to keep track of that as you see, because I think a lot of people don't pay attention to those things, and all of a sudden the church is in a certain position, and everybody starts going, well, how did we get there? So I'm just going to, uh, the council talked about this, and we're going to be, once a month after council, be publish, uh, publishing what uh, year-to-date giving is and what year-to-date expenses are, just so the congregation is a little bit more informed on those topics, and so just giving you a heads up on that. Uh, and with that, any other announcements? Let us rise and close our service with song. We call that in our midst dwells Christ is only Son as members of his mighty joy. We are in You know that gal, that older couple? The husband's not here this week, and she's here. Do you remember his name? She's up there.